Hello and welcome back to Football Scrutiny. We're going to be taking a look at the 4-3-3, which as we all know is one of the most popular formations in world football. And we're going to take a look at one of the most common attacking variations which we're seeing in recent years, and that's switching it into the 3-4-3 formation, or even the 3-2-5, depending on how you want to look at the, the height of the players in the wide areas. So the question is, how are we getting from this general structure here with a back four with a midfield three and then three forwards up higher in the pitch. How are we getting from that into this? Now we've got the back three, we've got a two, and like I said, it's either a three, four, three, depending on the height of these wide players, or you can even say, well, now it's actually a three, two, five, because these players are so high and wide. So let's have a look at the different ways which we can get from the 4-3-3 into these systems. And we're going to start off by taking a look at the, the wingers which come inside, the fullbacks which can move high, and the pivot which drops in between the two centre-backs. Pivot doesn't always have to drop in between the two centre-backs, they can also come into the side instead of into the, into the middle. But let's just take a look at that on the, on the tactics board. So when we move into the tactics board, every time I'm going to be talking about the, the way that these systems interact, I'm going to be talking about them facing a system which is going to be a 4-4-2. Uh, it could be a 4-2-3-1 uh, by moving these players into higher positions, but in general we're just going to be looking at the 4-4-2 the as it's one of the most commonly used defensive systems. Um, perhaps in another video we can take a look at how, how teams defend in other systems, but for today we're just going to be using that, the 4-4-2. Now that's with magic, put the 4-3-3 the three, three in, boom, there it is. So this is our general structure. And we said, let's take a look at it when, when the wide players move into, into, uh, into these channels into here. So before that, I'm just going to just highlight with my amazingly developed um, area here, just to show that there's little squares in between um, the players in a 4-4-2, in between the centre-backs and the midfielders, the left-back, right-back, uh, left midfielder, uh, the left back, the left centre back, the left winger, and the the left central midfielder, and then obviously in between these. So you can see that the general idea is that using this system, the the three two five or the three four three, the players will be moving into these areas to try and occupy the spaces, not only in between um, these lines with the the defensive line, but also in between the actual midfielder and the and the defensive lines. So here we can see this player occupying in between these two players, making two players thinking about him. The winger comes inside and makes these two players think about him, but also these two players to try and prevent passes coming inside. Um, so we've got the wingers now inside. If we just move the fullbacks up as well, you can now see that line of five. And then we'll just drop the pivot back down, move the centre-backs out wide. So we've kind of got this system now. So the joyous thing about this, this system, obviously, is when you're circulating the ball, you've got superiority against the, the forwards. Um, so we've got three against two here. You've also got, if I just do that, actually a 4v2 in this area here. 4v2 in this area here, um, and you've got a 5 versus 4 in this area here. So the joyous thing about this system is that, okay, the 4 4 2 are going to shift across and cover in certain situations, but it's also preventing these kind of players from jumping into here to help, because if they do, then they're, for, they're a larger distance from helping out the defence now. So everything in your defensive structure would obviously have to be all well organised to combat this. Um, but yeah, so let's just have a, a quick look at a couple of things. So if, if this team is circulating the ball, then you'll find that if they can filter passes in here, then there's a real problem. Centre-back can't really come out because there's this player who make runs in behind. Uh, if the full-back jumps the in, inside, then you're op obviously opening that up there. So it's a really nice system. To, to really try and break down this 4-4-2. Um, let's move on to the next one. 
So this is now the wing is staying high and wide and the actual centre midfielders moving into these areas into here and using the, the use of an inverted fullback to pop inside into this interior channel and then the centre backs shifting across. This kind of system it really it, when choosing to use uh, the the 343 it's important that you know the characteristics of your players because if this player isn't comfortable on the ball and you're putting him into midfield position, why do you really want him there if he's not good on the ball? Or are you going to avoid this player completely? Perhaps he's a defensive-minded right back, uh, not so good on the ball, but he can prevent transitions in the defensive phase. So before deciding which players are going to move into which positions, try and look at their characteristics in all four phases of the game, not just the attacking and the defensive phase, but also the transition phases as well. So... Without further ado, let's have a look at this one. So this is the inverted fullback and the, the midfielders moving high. So these players are going to move into these channels here. The wingers stay high and wide. And then we've got that fullback moving in to the middle, him shifting across, centre-back moving across, centre-back moving across, and the fullback coming inside. So yeah, that, I quite like that one, um, especially if this is a... A defensively minded player and if these players are able to get into the area um, perhaps they're tall strong centre midfielders who can either like with a Steven Gerrard type run burst forward and get into these areas or perhaps they're a Michael Balak who when the ball is out wide they're attacking into these areas here and they're dangerous in the box so yeah I quite like um, I quite like that but really yeah, like I said it depends on the kind of players you've got at your disposal so the next one we're going to be looking at is the fullbacks, which are high and staying inside. So they're, they're not coming out wide. The wingers are staying out wide. And these fullbacks are coming into these channels here. Um, it's not commonly used, but it is effective when you've got fullbacks who've got a lot of energy. They're able to get forward and backwards. And you've got uh, wingers who are naturally gifted at playing out wide. Rather than having them come inside and the fullbacks, and the fullbacks coming on the outside, if this player isn't as comfortable as being on the inside as he is on the outside, then ask, asking your fullbacks to come into that area there is, is a better option, especially if they've got the legs to get forward and back and you want to maintain the energy of these players here in the final third. So let's just take a look at that in the tactics board. So yeah, like I mentioned, uh, let's just imagine then that there's a switch of play and the ball goes into your winger and then your fullback makes his way into these areas here. This is a player who's good at a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, strong in the in the final third, then you might want him to be looking at uh, sucking him out and then making these runs into here. Um, yeah, this is the kind of uh, formation which some people use. And then you've got the different ways of creating that back three and creating the stability, either dropping your, your centre-back, uh, not your centre-back, dropping your pivot in between the centre-backs, but also dropping... Uh, the wider midfielders into these areas here. So it might be dropping in your number 10, your 6, and your 8, and your 4 stays there. And the ball might be getting air like that. So kind of a circulation into your number 10, and then either on the inside into your fullback or into the, onto the outside into your winger, and then trying to create uh, opportunities like that. So I quite like that one. And then we've got something which is more logical to a lot of people, would be like an... an not a symmetrical thing. So not using both your fullbacks at the same time to come up um, into these areas, but actually using, depending on the players which you've got available to you, your, your, your right back might be really good at getting these areas, but your left back not. Or your number eight might be really good at breaking into these areas, but your number 10 not. So it's basically trying to find the, the best thing for you, depending on the characteristics of your of your players. So... Yeah, as mentioned, your your number eight might be good at moving into these areas. Your number 10 might be good at moving into there. Your fullback is energetic and you're able to get him up high. Um, you could even then have some kind of uh, your fullback coming into these areas um, and having that inverted fullback as well. So, yeah, so that's kind of a not a symmetrical way of playing it. And then you've got rotations. So... I and mean, this isn't properly properly done. But if we look at... Let's take these off, actually. Let's take these lines off. 
So what kind of movements can we have? We can have the number, like we already mentioned, the number 10 dropping into there, the number two into there. Or we can have the number 10 firing out wide, the number two moving in and the number seven dropping back into this area here. Uh, what else are there? There's loads. Um, we can also have the both, well, the number four drop coming into the midfield whilst these push high and both your fullbacks are staying back. So if you've got a good playing ball centre back um, who's just as comfortable playing in the midfield, you can push him into midfield. Um, let's just pop him back. So we've already said that the number two can come into here. Number seven can drop into here. Or we can even have the number nine switching in so we can have the number 10 going into, into here. The number nine then switching into this channel or the number nine dropping in. The number seven coming into this channel and the number two coming out. So this kind of player might be your Roberto Firmino at Liverpool there. He's comfortable dropping into the midfield. Um, yeah, so there's just loads of rotations that that we can do and it really causes a lot of problems for for the 442 especially so uh which one should we have a look at first which one was interesting so we could say that the number three and the number four comes into midfield and the i said the number 10 and number eight will move into there we can also have then the number nine dropping back into this area here The number nine dropping in, the number ten now fulfilling the position of of the central striker, the number seven coming into here, and then the fullback going out wide. So there's loads and loads of different um different ways to create this three two five system or the, the three four three. So perhaps in another video we can take a little bit more of a look in depth on how to how to prevent certain ways of playing. So for example, when they're playing out with the three, who should jump? Do you want your number 11 to jump, but then leave the player out wide? Because if you leave the player out wide, then your number three has to shift across. And you've got a two against one in this channel, two against one in here. Like. And if your number four comes across, then you're really going to leave your central striker alone for an early ball into here. No, you can't. So yeah, it's important to be able to find a way to stop teams playing in this system so it needs to stop here you need to try and find a way to stop these center backs playing out and then obviously you have to try and prevent the switches of play and the runs in behind after a switch of play so that's going to be something for another video so look out for part two of how to how to combat the the three four three system and how to combat the the three two five system hopefully you like this video um really appreciate it and hopefully enjoy our content that's going to be coming up in the next few months.